Little T Studio presents a polymer clay tutorial for making beautiful roses. The technique shown in this tutorial can be used for polymer clay as well as gum paste, fondant, and sugar dough. Roses can be turned into so many things, such as pendants. You can make small or large pendants, small or large roses. Beautiful! You can also turn them into earrings, such as this clip-on earring. And then, of course, you can turn them into pierced earrings by attaching the appropriate hardware. So, let's get started! For my roses, I'm going to use some pink Fimo Soft Clay. Next, we need a towel to wipe our hands on, some type of cutting tool like a knife or single-edged blade, and then a piece of parchment paper, and that's it! Using this green rose as our example, we want to first start with our center. So we're going to take one of the little balls of clay we have here and really squish that down well. It's important that the clay be really soft and pliable. So once we flatten that out, what we want to do is curl in one of the sides. And you'll see I'm curling it with a taper point. So when you're done, it kind of looks like a seashell. Now I want to take one of the other little balls of clay and start squishing it down. This is that pancake method that I was talking about in my feed. So what we want to do is make exactly that, little pancakes. Squish them down, flatten them down, and it doesn't matter if it's a perfect circle. In fact, you actually don't want them to be perfect circles. You want it to have a more natural look and feel. So you want different sizes of balls of clay, so that way you'll get different looking petals. So now that we have our first pancake, we're going to attach it to the center. And really, we're only pressing at the bottom because we want it to get a nice firm grip, but we don't want to squish the top. So we just want to pinch that, crimp it, and then there you go, you've got a nice petal. So we're going to do that again. I'm going to knead this clay really, really well. Make it nice and thin. And again, notice I'm not trying to get perfect circles. And then halfway through the first petal, we attach the second petal. This will help to create a really nice wrapping effect around your center of your flower. So let's make another petal, squish it down flat like a pancake. Get it nice and thin. There we go, that's looking really good. And now we want to attach it to our flower. And again, halfway through the other petal is where you want to attach the new petal, and then just gently pinch the edges so that the flower petals look a little bit curled. That will help give it a really nice natural look. So we're going to attach this piece, and again crimp the edges. It's amazing how quickly the flower comes to life as you go through this process. And really, it's all about making pancakes and attaching them. And when I was training other people to do this, I've even trained kids as young as five years old that have been able to make beautiful flowers using this process because anyone can make pancakes. So this flower is coming together really nicely. And I think I'm going to add one more petal just to round it out. One of the nice things about making flowers this way is that there's no set of rules to the number of petals that have to be added. It's all up to you, so you can let the flower just develop before your eyes. So we'll attach that now, and then crimp the edges, and I think our flower is complete. Beautiful! So now we have this little stem on the back that we've been holding on to, which helps us add those petals, but a lot of times you really want to cut that off. So before we do that, we need to refrigerate this for at least 20 minutes to help it stiffen a little. Okay, so our flower has had time to harden, so now we want to take our cutting tool and we want to cut it. And you notice I'm not going to cut it this way, because if I do, it's going to smush the detail that we have in there. So we don't want to cut that way. Instead, we want to lay it flat and 
gently cut, still using that stem to help keep the blade away from our fingers. And there you go. Now no cutting of the fingers, but we have a nice flat back, perfect for earrings. These roses can be used for lots of different things. If you decorate cakes or cupcakes, you can also use these techniques to create these same roses out of gum paste or fondant quickly and easily. Beautiful! Visit our website at littleteastudio.com. Click the shop button for lots of fun stuff and learn a little bit more about Little Tea Studio. Well, that completes this tutorial. If you have any questions or tutorial suggestions, feel free to contact me at tanya at littleteastudio.com. Thank you for watching and happy crafting!